How's it fix? Starfield is a massive game with a lot of hidden features and mechanics that aren't explained, so I figured I'd go through a couple of them to help you get the most out of your game. As the game starts off with mining, I will do the same. If you thought the mining laser was slow and inefficient, that is because it really is so. In order to speed it up, hold down both the left and right mouse button or whatever you have set as the attack and aim down sight to mine significantly faster. Although it also drains the power of the mining laser faster, so only keep short bursts up. On a similar but different vein, did you know you could mine asteroids? When you are traveling through space and encounter an asteroid field, take a moment to fire your weapons at the asteroids to shatter them and loot a fair amount of resources. It is possible to mine a large amount of resources through this method and help get you enough resources to start an outpost. Bringing up outposts, I would recommend building at least one in a system near the start that doesn't have any patrols and use it as a stash or hideout for when you acquire contraband. If you have too much for your shielded cargo bay to protect and don't want to lose it. All you really need to do is to bolt a supplier crate and store the contraband in it for when you want to do some smuggling. This will also help you to loot and store contraband from a mission so you can carry on with the next stage without worrying about losing it to the patrol scanning you. On the topic of contraband, if you don't have access to shielded cargo bays yet, there is a system available basically from the beginning of the game that you can sell your contraband at. It's called the Wolf System and it's sort of situated right in the middle of the settled systems between UC Space and the Freestar Collective. In it, there is a station called the Den with a Trade Authority member inside that you can sell your ill-gotten gains to, as the Trade Authority will buy anything. If he runs out of money, you can either store your remaining contraband back at your hideout or buy something normal like a new weapon from him to basically give him money and then sell off the rest of your contraband and then sell the normal items in a major settlement with all of their vendors. Speaking of money, one of the best ways to earn credits is to sell survey data of planets. If you fully survey a planet, you can sell the data to either Vlad from Constellation or to the list member that you can encounter from early in the game, although he only buys data from habitable planets with a normal atmosphere for colonists. Don't sell the data to normal merchants as it weighs nothing, so it doesn't take up any space and Vlad will pay at least double the price of what you could get from selling it to any regular merchant. And if you never really spent much time trying to survey planets, then you might not know that it is one of the best ways to earn XP and level up. You will earn XP from scanning the animals, plants and resources. You will then get a bonus when you have scanned all that's available. You will also get a significant chunk of XP from scanning the planetary traits, such that it is often more than doing side quests. Sometimes I was getting over 250 XP for each trait scanned. And then, of course, you will also earn experience from all the animals you kill that attack you planet side. I have a video I will link in the description and the end of this video that will help you get those 100% scan plans quickly and efficiently. Talking about efficiency, if you sleep before completing quests or doing activities that you expect to reward a lot of XP, then you will gain the well-rested buff that increases all XP gained by 10%. If you had romanced a companion and sleep while they are your follower, then the buff increases to an extra 15% XP after resting. There is also a fair amount of food and drink that will increase your XP gained after consuming it, including something called Alien Tea that you can craft at the food crafting station from resources you'll get while exploring. Alternatively, you can buy the tea if you don't wish to engage with the crafting. And if you want even more XP buffs, then consider investing in the nutrition perk with its last level making food and drink 50% more effective. On the topic of skills, there are other skills that even if you don't invest in them, it's still possible to be successful in them by stacking modifiers. For example, persuasion. There are numerous opportunities in Starfield to persuade someone to your point of view, and it is often the quickest and least messy way to accomplish your objective. On top of that, many of the companions will like you more for persuading someone rather than shooting them. You can equip some fancy outfit or formal wear, drink some alcohol, take some drugs like Paramore and Hippolyta, 
and even install some cyberware in Neon that can all boost your persuasion chance to the point that you won't have to invest all of your early game skills into it. On top of all that, if you can get context by reading or overhearing conversations, it may be possible that the information you just learned will be included as an option in the skill check that generally adds a lot of points for a guaranteed chance of success that looks like a light blue color above the normally safe green options. Next, we move on to armored enemies. If you are struggling to deal with them with your normal weapons, then consider equipping an EM weapon that stuns targets, shown by a light blue bar appearing above their normal health bar. When you fill that bar up, they are stunned and you can kill them very easily without them fighting back. EM weapons on your ship are also a very effective way of disabling the enemy ship so you can board them and get free ships. Just make sure your piloting skill is high enough to fly it. As you explore, kill and level up, you will start to come across weapons and armor with modifiers such as calibrated or refined that will have better base stats compared to gear without the modifier. There are tiers for your gear that will allow you to use your favorite weapon even till the end of the game and still deal lots of damage. The tiers start with calibrated showing up around level 10 and then refined around level 20. It goes on to advanced around level 30 and superior gear will start dropping around level 40 to 50. These modifiers are also separate from rarity like the blue, purple and gold weapons and armor. One final bonus tip involves the star map and grav jumping. You may notice the different colored stars and some are glowing and others are red. The glowing stars are ones you have already visited and the white ones without the glow are the ones you haven't been to yet. The red stars don't necessarily mean that they are too high level, although that would often be the case as well. Instead, they mean that you haven't visited that star system on the way to the star you've selected. You can only fast travel to systems you have already discovered, so you'll need to visit each system along the way if you want to reach the red star that you have selected. And once you have gotten to the star system just before it, then it will no longer glow red, but will change to the white star without a glow, indicating you haven't already discovered it yet, but you can travel to it. I hope some of this information helps you get more out of your game, and I have more guides and videos planned for Starfield, so consider subscribing if you wish to see more. Otherwise, I hope you all have a fantastic day, take care and cheers for now.